How you doing? I'm your man, John Wilson. Today we're going to be solving three systems of equations using substitution. You're going to see that despite the fact that you think this is hard, it's in fact easy because some of the work's already been done for us. We look here at our first system. I can see that these problems are written in slope intercept form. I have y equals x minus 6 and y equals 2x minus 8. When you're using substitution, the first thing you have to do is get one of the variables alone by itself. That means on one side of the equation, coefficient has to be 1. I happen to have two of those here. And because both of these y's are isolated, I can pick which one I want to substitute in. For this problem, I'm going to choose to substitute this x minus 6 into the other equation. What you have to look at here is you have to look at the fact that this equation is saying that y is equal to x minus 6. So all I have to do to solve this in order to get rid of a variable is simply substitute in x minus 6 for y into the other equation. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'll write this equation y equals 2x minus 8. On the next level of the problem, you're going to notice that the y is going to be replaced by x minus 6. So x minus 6 equals 2x minus 8. And wow, that didn't just get a whole lot easier to solve. Right now, I've got rid of a variable, which usually is the hardest thing to do when solving a system of equations. I'm just going to solve this equation, which is an equation with variable on both sides. I'll know what x is. I will then go back and substitute in to get the y value. So draw a line. We know that we have two equal signs to an equation. Draw on my little invisible coefficient there. Again, that's a 1x. First thing we want to do is we want to get all of our variable terms to one side of the equation. This coefficient is smaller, so I'm going to move it over here. It'll cut down on the necessary steps in order to solve this problem. Using inverse operations, I subtract 1x from both sides. Those will cancel, and I'm going to have negative 6 is equal to x. 2 minus 1 leaves just x. 1x is the same as x minus 8. Okay, got the variables on the right side. Need to get the constants on the other side, which means that this negative 8 has to go. Once again, inverse operations. I add 8 to both sides, and I'm going to have half the answer to this system. x equals 2. Remember that when you solve a system, the answer is a coordinate pair. Coordinate pairs are written x comma y. So I know what the x value is. Now I just have to go in and find the y. To do that, I'm going to take this 2, and I'm going to substitute it in to this equation. Notice that I'm not using the one that I already substituted into. I'm using the other equation. I have to do that in order for this method to work. So I'll write that out now. y equals x minus 6. I know that x is 2, so when I go to the second level of the problem, I'm going to remove the x, replace it with a 2. The reason there's no multiplication there is because my coefficient is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. I bring down the negative 6. Combine my terms, 2 minus 6 gives me negative 4, and I just found the y. Looks pretty easy to me. My solution is 2 comma negative 4. How can you check that? You take these coordinates, substitute them into both equations, see if you get two true statements. Something like this. We take this 2, substitute it in for x. We take the negative 4, we substitute it in for y. So you're going to end up with negative 4 is equal to 2 minus 6. Well, when I do the math there, I'll end up with negative 4 is equal to negative 4. That is a true statement. Solution works there. I'm going to substitute it into the other equation now. And I'm going to have negative 4 is equal to 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 8. I combine terms over here. I also end up with negative 4 is equal to negative 4. It's a true statement. Solution works. One problem down, two to go. This next problem here, a little different. Notice that I only have one equation that has a variable completely alone by itself. That's the bottom one here, which limits my choices. This means that I have to substitute this in to the y in the other equation. Watch as I do that. 
4x plus 2. The y is here right now, but in a second, the y is going to be taken out. I go to the next level of the problem, 4x plus 2, there's multiplication happening there. I'm going to substitute this in for the y, and it's going to look like this. 6x minus 5 equals negative 2. I bring down the 4x plus, I multiply, that's going to give me 12x minus 10 equals negative 2. Notice I multiply 2 times 6x and 2 times negative 5. I now combine terms if I can. I can combine these two x's, 4x and 12x gives me 16x, I bring down the negative 10, I bring down the negative 2. Inverse operations, I add 10 to both sides, and I'm going to get 16x is equal to 8, I now divide both sides by 16, and I'm going to find my x. My x is equal to 1 half. So I have half the solution, x is equal to 1 half. I'll write that here as my coordinate pair. I'm now going to go back and I'm going to substitute this into the equation I have not used yet. I did not substitute anything into the bottom one. I substitute the bottom and the top. So I write the bottom equation, y equals 6x minus 5. I substitute in what I know, x is 1 half. y equals 6 times 1 half minus 5. This multiplication is not as easy, uh, not as hard as it looks. What is 6 times 1 half? Well, what's half of 6? That's right, 3. So y equals 3 minus 5. You combine your terms, y equals negative 2. That's the other half of the answer. 2 down, 1 to go. Last one here, I got a problem. I got nothing isolated. I have an x and a y on the left side, I have an x and a, y, a negative y on the left side of the bottom. So what you do here is you have to decide what do you want to isolate. Easiest route, in my opinion, is to work with this top equation. I have a positive x, positive y, so I'm going to move one of these variables to the other side. That will get the opposite variable alone. What am I saying? Watch. I have x plus y equals negative 3. You first have to decide which variable do you want to isolate. I'm going to choose to isolate the y, which means I need to get rid of this x from the left side of the equation. In order to do that, draw my line, use inverse operations, I subtract x from both sides. I am not subtracting x from negative 3, they are unlike terms, I simply cancel and I rewrite negative x minus 3. Now that I've isolated y, I'm going to take this and substitute it in to this equation. And I'm going to have x minus y equals negative 1. I know what y is. Let's substitute that in. x minus negative x minus 3 equals negative 1. I have to get rid of these parentheses. So there's a little number you don't see here. It's an invisible 1. I distribute that in. I'll get x plus x plus 3 equals negative 1. I combine my terms, I get 2x plus 3 equals negative 1. I now get rid of the constants from the left side of the equation, minus 3, minus 3. 2x equals negative 4. I divide both sides by my coefficient, which is 2. I get x is equal to negative 2. Once I get that, I'm going to substitute this back into my other equation, specifically this one right here. I haven't substituted anything in there yet, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute back into this equation. And when I do that, we'll do it right here real quick. I'm going to have negative 2 plus y equals negative 3. I add 2 to both sides, and I get y is equal to negative 1. I have both halves of the answer now. I'm going to put my coordinate pair right here, negative 2 comma negative 1. That's my answer, and that is how easy substitution is. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time. That's another reason. Math matters.